Ask Dr. Katz, Sidetracked in Salt Lake, Part 3, written by Momoko, posted in June of 2010. Maddie and Katz go way back to university days when they studied together in the computer science department. Now, as a video game programmer in a major company, it would seem Maddie has it all. There's one dream, however, that has remained elusively beyond the reach of this avid anime fan, gamer, and cosplay seamstress, the dream of learning Japanese. In part one, Maddie explained the problem. She keeps getting distracted, especially by English TV shows, discouraged and giving up. In part two, Dr. Katz encouraged her to view language as a habit instead of a skill or intellectual pursuit and give herself credit for learning things in context. In the last installment, Dr. Katz reveals the secret of how he managed to learn Japanese on his own while still functioning as a busy college student in the US. Continued from part two. Okay, so at the end of the day, I do want to do this, but I still live in America. I still have to go to work and pay my bills and talk to my family, and this all has to be done in English. So it's not like I can go and live in an all Japanese place. I still want to learn more about code and read stuff and actually understand it, etc, etc. But I would like to learn Japanese. I can easily, or at least relatively easily, switch my background, I live alone and I don't like a quiet apartment, stuff to Japanese, and I can even dedicate half an hour or so to learning to read every day, but is this enough? I know I won't learn as fast as some, but I want to learn. I can't sacrifice my life to this, but it is important to me. Good question. Obviously, the more you give it, the more and faster you get. As you recall, Maddie, yes, I gave everything to Japanese, but I was still a functioning college student. I mean, we talked, we hung out. Here's what I did. Here is the secret, if you will. Next heading. The secret. The secret. The secret. I removed any and all English that was not necessary. Not necessary to my livelihood, safety, or basic minimum maintenance level for key relationships. For example, when I would talk to Momoko's dad, I often didn't take off both earphones, just one side. To some that's going a bit far, but I wanted Japanese, and I wasn't going to make excuses. I was going to give myself, as far as possible, everything that a native speaker gets. A so-called native speaker, that is. This term is very flawed. So yes, my college classes were in English, but my home and bedroom needn't be. My college assignments were in English, but why does my iPod have to have English on it? The university webpage was in English, but does my Gmail have to be? And people say, but what if I don't understand? I'm like, I'm a simulated native. If I don't understand, then I learn to understand. And I don't get to do this stuff until I do. Sounds strict, but like I said, I had a very playful, experimental attitude. It only comes out sounding strict to make it me seem good and disciplined. But you know me, Maddie. You know me. You've been to my house here. We went to school together. We took classes together. We TA'd together in the computer science building. You saw my desk area. You know I'm just a scruffy little kid who thinks the world is his bedroom. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh yeah. I changed my OS to Japanese Windows XP well before I was ready because I felt and the action proved it. We don't learn the language in order to be exposed to it. We learn the language because we are exposed to it. Okay. Next heading, touch the language. Now, if that all seems hard to do, one simple hack is this. Increase the frequency with which you are exposed to Japanese. Focus on just touching Japanese, coming into contact with it. Even if it's like have a batch file that plays a Japanese song or opens a Japanese YouTube video once an hour every hour. Something, anything, touch the language. Seems silly, sure, but think of all the years of studying and stopping and classes and giving up and teachers leaving and books bought but unopened and hating yourself and blaming yourself and doing Hulu, watching anime but only with English subtitles, instead. How intelligent was that? How efficient was that? At least you're having fun. With YouTube, those Japanese commercials and game shows are hilarious. Okay, it's good to know that just trying a little is still trying and worth it. Everything is worth it. Everything counts. None of this- It was in context. Nonsense, haha. -ha. And I can at least choose five shows that I like on Hulu, watch those, and then the rest of the time just watch or listen to anime. That in itself could be huge. You don't want to know the number of hours I've listened to shows I don't even like. Exactly. And you could, if you want, watch those shows in Japanese. What now, woman? I mean, it's not essential, and you get to watch them anyway, right? So why not? Next heading. Get a solid grounding in play. So, some people say, what about the serious stuff? What, like Japanese tax code? Give me a break. One, play is serious stuff. Two, play is serious stuff. Three, native kids always play, 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 play first. Four, serious stuff will handle itself once you have a solid foundation in play. The playing around part is fundamental. Think of how you can game and even use a computer. It's all because you played around with these things. Same thing with speaking English. It's all play. 
Think of the people you know who can't game or speak English or use a computer. It's because they never tried to play at it, always trying to be serious. Okay, I feel more heartened. Stepping off soapbox. Okay, back to normal now, I think. So yeah, no pressure, no techniques, Mads. Japanese isn't something you go do, it's just part of who you are. Get a solid grounding in play. Play first, fun first. Whatever I can do for you or get for you here, let me know. Thanks much, Lee. The end.